You know, forget Duelist Nexus. Duelist Nexus is booty, booty, butt cheeks. Age of Overlord is gonna be the set that goes for your king of mythical beasts. Ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button. So we can climb even higher, the 1200 ladder. We're so close to 1,250 subscribers. That's That's gotta be a milestone that is worth something, right? Anyways, I wanna talk about the age of your overlord because that set is looking so, so disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. And disgusting in the sense that, honestly, this may be a hot take, I think it's going to be Power of the Elements level of a set. Now, hear me out on this before you're like, keyboard warrior, you're going you're gonna to bust open your keyboard and beat me on over the head with it. It's plugged in. It's not Bluetooth or else I'd do something with it. But anyway, <laughs> so before you start getting mad, hear me out, right? Age of Overlord has so many good things in the set, or at least so many good things going for it that, yeah, it's not like one-to-one -one perfect like Power of the Elements, but there's still a lot there. You know, we're getting the brand new Horus archetype that has nothing to do with the Horus level monsters, but you could probably play Horus level 8 or level 10, whichever the spell negator one is, in the deck somehow. I also like the fact that it does revolve around the sarcophagus spell that they have, because there actually is uh, a set of spells that revolve around like they're, I think they're literally called like first, second, and third sarcophagus. And then you have the trap sarcophagus. You use it to summon some like crappy effect monster from like Pharaoh Servant. It's dog water. It's booty booty butt cheeks. But the fact that they revolve around this continuous spell that actually helps progress their game state makes it seem like that they're actually going to be really good. And if I remember correctly, like all of them are level eight. So you can combine it with like rank eight axis shenanigans, which side note, rank eight axis is on like nobody's radar. So like... If you want to cheese some wins at your locals, possibly even a regional, I mean, my dad's playing rank eight axis. That's a perfect example right there. You'll probably steal some wins. Like your toughest matchup is going to probably be any deck that can play Eradicator uh, and probably Labyrinth. But like outside of that, rank eight axis, I think is only going to get better, you know, between the Waning Moon level two tuner out of Monsters Revenge, plus the new Synchron stuff out of Duels Nexus. You might be able to do something with that, or at least with Assault Synchron, plus the level eights out of Horus. It's a really good investment in that regard. I was also looking over the TG stuff before I started recording this video. And I know I didn't cover it on the channel. That's when I was going off to my uh, cancer center to do my cancer stuff, whatever, for my Von Hippolyndau disease. I've talked about that on the channel before. You should go check out my book, Shameless Plug, link in the description. Selling it on Amazon, digital only. Shameless Plug, I know, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah. The TG stuff, I didn't cover it on the channel, is really good. I was reading over the stuff, and they've got an Infernity Barrier. They're synchro base, so they can just use the stuff out of Duelist Nexus. So, like, I was looking at TCG Player, and a lot of the TG stuff, like Max Rarity, is actually kind of cheap. Like, the most expensive stuff you're looking at is, like, Hyper Librarian out of, like, an old 5D set for, like, 30 bucks which is like whatever, you can just play a super or like the jump promo. Even some of the ultis are pretty cheap. Like one of the ulti TG synchros is like $22, $28. Bucks. Like that's not bad at all. Um, and it's not that bad of an investment. And on top of that, the cards are absolutely insane. You know, they, they come from like what, 2010, 2011? So you don't have hard ones per turns on these things. You can't tell me that the TG EM1 trap, which is literally a creature swap and it's not once per turn, you can't tell me that that's not broken, ladies and gentlemen. I have nothing but high hopes. Sorry, I'm still trying to kind of get over my cold. I have nothing but high hopes for TGs. I really think that they're going to be a tier one deck coming out of Age of Overlord, especially too, since it's hard to really know when we're going to get a ban list. I mean, Age of Overlord drops in October. That's basically only two months away at this point. July is basically over. And then the regional season starts, I think, like August 12th or 13th uh, for Duelist Nexus. So, like, what's Konami going to do? Drop a ban list, like, the weekend before the regional season starts? Or, like, are they going to wait till like, we're knee-deep in regional season? It's really hard to say at this point. And not only do you have the Horus stuff and the TG stuff, you have the Zark stuff, which... That pendulum stuff, I would say that Age of Overlord, if you just had to look at it in a vacuum, I would say it's like a pendulum set. Like the stuff that Pendulum Magician gets out of Age of Overlord is absolutely insane to me. Like 
Yeah, the Arc Ray Dragon, its name is always treated as Zark, so you can't play three of that and three of the Zark. Kind of similar to like the, the Neo Space Infusions, how their name is always treated as like, say, Aqua Dolphin. But regardless, the fact that you can tag out for both in a sense uh, seems really interesting. And they're both, of course, 4,000 attack beat sticks. And so I feel like someone in the community that just loves pendulums is going to break this stuff somehow. Um, especially like with what already Pendulum Magicians can do right now, minus the one person at my locals who plays Pendulum Magicians. I mean, no one is playing Pendulum Magicians. You know, the deck is booty booty butt cheeks. It hasn't done anything. I, I would argue it's not even rogue because it's like, yeah, it puts out all these negates. But like, if you crack the board, the deck really doesn't have any kind of crack back. And it does take a very good player to pilot it. But at the same time, it's like, okay, you set up all these negates. Now that Dark Ruler is moving back into the format, what are you really doing? Like, you don't have an Infernity Barrier line you can go down unless maybe you go into, like, the new Visa Starfrost Synchro to set the reframing and hope that, like, whatever Synchro you have on the board doesn't die so that your reframing doesn't die. But besides all that, you know, you combine the stuff with Duelist Nexus with Age of Overlord. Yeah, maybe you can have something Pendulum Magician-wise that can take advantage of all of those new cards at once. That's not even to mention the new Earthbound stuff that seems very splash. But I didn't read up on those cards before I started recording, but I remember from what I did talk about, I think I even covered it on the channel, that the new Earthbound stuff actually seems really good, which I never thought I would say Earthbound Immortal stuff is good. Like, that's table, not even table 500 stuff, that's table 5,000 in the depths of hell garbage. Like, it's, it's horrible. And so, uh, I think Age of Overlord is really poised to be like the next Power of the Elements level set because of all the good cards in it. Yeah, we're not getting generically good things like ultimate slayer to a much lesser extent or like a garua level card or a sprite elf level card that we know of unless we get some sort of crazy tcg exclusive archetype in age of overlord but <clears throat> we've even seen like the horror stuff taking off in the ocg at least the first couple tournaments with age of overlord legal so there's definitely something there and uh, I don't know, maybe there's like something that they'll combine here in the TCG with like Synchron stuff to make the horse stuff even better, or maybe they'll combine it with Earthbound Immortals. I don't know, it's too early to tell, but just looking at a glance a couple months out, now that we just got Duelist Nexus, I'm kind of sitting here like, Duelist Nexus feels like it's just a taste. Age of Overlord is really going to be what turns the format on its head. Because think about it, you know, you look at like even the events out of Kong's cards that are doing stuff post Duelist Nexus. That's not to say that the cards that are Duelist Nexus are bad. It's just, you know, like a lot of other people are saying, you're not getting that massive format shift. And we're really not going to get that until we get a new balance, which God knows at this point when we're going to see one, hopefully sooner than later, because things like Cash Tira and Eradicator and many other things need to be taken care of. And so you're going to see a couple new faces in the format, maybe even like, you know, Alter Guys, Synchrons, you know, because it's a Synchron set out of Duels Nexus, things like that. <coughs> but you're still going to see the other top players of the meta still at the upper echelon. So, you know, even though these new decks come into the fray and their power levels here, the decks that are already established like Cash Tira, Sprite Purely, whatever, are going to be up here. And so you're really not going to see a massive shift until A, we get a balanced, or B, something like Age of Overlord injects itself, pause, into the format and really shakes things up. That's going to be when we see a massive shift, which is what's making a lot of people think, like, are we not going to see a damn ban list until like October or November and be in like a four or five and a half month long format? Because nobody wants that. Like, you know, I would be perfectly content with having a ban list every three months. You know, I think we're already due for one because the format's established. We've had nationals. It's not like Konami's got to sit back and say, gee, what the hell should we hit? Uh, Eradicator for one thing, because you basically can't stop it once it's set on the field because we don't have fucking Red Reboot. Sorry, kind of lost my ass there for a little bit, but regardless. So, <laughs> guys... Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm really excited for Age of Overlord. I may have to be a TG main. We're going to have to go on back to 2011 and doing stuff like TG Warwolf and getting our searches, boys. Lord have mercy. It's going to be a good time. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.